In this video, we're looking at trigonometric equations, and the unit circle makes another appearance here because we're going to be using it to solve our trigonometric equations. So the first thing we want to look at here is an example, because I think this is the best way to teach this. And we need to solve the equation for the domain from 0 to 360. So we're only looking at that range. Now, we have sine x equals 0 0.34. Now, the first thing we need to take note of is that it equals a positive number. All right, so sine equals positive. Now, if you remember your unit circle, all stations to central, so sine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. All right, so all station, stations to central, so sine's positive here and here, in all and in sine. All right, so now we're just going to solve this as any normal equation, so sine x equals 0 0.34 we take the inverse of both sides so we get x equals 19.53 now we're not done there because remember q1 so in quadrant 1 it's sine theta in quadrant 2 it's sine 180 minus theta. So we still, we have the quadrant 1 one, but we need to find quadrant 2. So that's going to be 180 minus 1953. So our final answers are going to be 19 and 53 degrees and 160 point, let me rewrite that neater, 160.7 degrees. Sorry, 760 degrees and seven minutes that's the same with these up here these should be degrees and minutes all right so quadrant one was that and then quadrant two was that one we're going to do another example here but this time they gave it to us in radians which is fine we're actually going to go and convert it to degrees so i want to convert to degrees first so convert degrees and I do that by knowing my triangles my uh, exact value triangle so let's quickly whip something up so here uh, the reason I know I'm dealing with this triangle is because it's the only one that has root 3 in it and then let's say there's 30 up here and 60 down there so I'm going all right well I have two options I either have 30 degrees or I have 60 degrees so if I did cos 30 all right, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that comes out as root 3 over 2. And if I did cos 60, that comes out as 1 over 2. So cos 30 obviously gave us the one we're after. So we know that x equals 30 degrees. But here's the thing. We remember cos is positive in... So cos is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So we found the quadrant 1. But we still need to find quadrant 4. So down here, x is going to equal 30 degrees, but it's also going to equal 360 minus 30 degrees for quadrant 4. So we end up with 30 degrees and 330 degrees. This being quadrant 1 and this being quadrant uh, 4. So with any of these type of problems, if you're in radians, first convert it to degrees to find what you're dealing with. But ultimately, it's about identifying what quadrants can exist. And you can be given a negative. If I was given a negative there for cos, I know I'd be dealing with quadrants 2 and 3. And then you just do the same with, with unit circle stuff there. So again, if it's in quadrant 1, it's just theta. Quadrant 2, 180 minus theta. Quadrant 3, 180 plus theta. And then quadrant 4 is 360 minus theta. Identify where your solution is true. In our case, it was it both causes positive in quadrant 1 and 4 for this example. You then go find those degrees that satisfy that equation.